Hello, sunshine. I'm Coy Wire. Welcome to CNN 10. Happy Friday, Fry, yay, and Pi Day. That's right, March 14th, or 3.14, the day we celebrate the fascinating mathematical constant pi, the ratio of a circle's circumference to its diameter. Pi Day has even been designated by UNESCO as the International Day of Mathematics. And did you know 3.14? Is Albert Einstein's birthday? Are you celebrating Pi Day today? Maybe with some pie? Hope so. Let's get this show on the road. We start today with the total lunar eclipse visible across the Western Hemisphere last night and early this morning. A lunar eclipse. That's when the Earth passes between the Sun and the Moon, casting a shadow on the Moon. A total lunar eclipse is when the entire Moon falls within the darkest part of one of the Earth's shadows. That's right, one of the Earth's shadows. Did you know the Earth has two of them, according to NASA? Its darker inner shadow is known as the umbra, and the lighter outer shadow is called the penumbra. So, the tilt of the moon around the Earth and these two different shadows behind which the moon might pass, they create three different types of lunar eclipses. One is called the penumbral eclipse, when the moon passes through the lighter outer penumbra shadow. NASA says this type of eclipse is so subtle that if you didn't know it was happening, you might not even notice. Another is called a partial eclipse, which happens at least twice per year. That's when the moon only gets covered by part of the Earth's umbra. Only part of it is shaded in darkness by the Earth. Finally, the biggest and rarest of them all, the total lunar eclipse. These are often separated by years because they require a precise alignment of the moon, Earth, and sun. While we might think that a total lunar eclipse would completely black out the moon, the moon actually takes on a deep red hue as the moon shifts deeper into the umbra. This is why it's sometimes referred to as a blood moon. The moon turns red because the atmosphere is filtering out color at the opposite end of the visible spectrum, the blue light. The short wavelengths of blue don't travel as far as the long red wavelengths, so they scatter before reaching our eyes, leaving behind this red glow. Not everyone on Earth can see a lunar eclipse. At the same time, you'll need to be in an area facing the moon during the moments it's shaded by Earth. But unlike a solar eclipse, you don't need any special equipment to enjoy a lunar eclipse. They are safe to watch at any stage, although a pair of binoculars might make it more fun. Pop quiz, hot shot. Which of the following was the first subaquatic tunnel ever built in the world? Thames Tunnel in UK, Holland Tunnel in the US, Baltimore Harbor Tunnel in the US, or Detroit Windsor Tunnel in the US and Canada? Answer is the Thames Tunnel, constructed under the River Thames in London between 1825 and 1843. Now to Europe, where a groundbreaking tunnel project will connect Denmark and Germany it's under construction, under the Baltic Sea. Once completed, this tunnel will break records as the longest immersed tunnel in the world, transforming European rail and road travel. Take a look at how this incredible feat of engineering is taking shape piece by giant concrete piece. You're looking at a record-shattering marvel in the making. It's a tunnel that's about to connect Germany and Denmark under the Baltic Sea, becoming the longest immersed tunnel in the world. Each one of these colossal concrete segments weighs as much as roughly 10 Eiffel Towers. They're built on land first before two immersion pontoons named Ivy 1 and 2 lower them into the water. Altogether, these 89 segments will form a tunnel longer than 170 soccer fields. All of this is happening underneath one of the world's busiest shipping lanes. By 2029, cars and trains will be moving between the two countries in a matter of minutes. So who wants to test it out first? To Brazil now, where a clever grassroots conservation effort is protecting species in the world's most biodiverse country that's also home to the world's fourth biggest road network. Brazilian biologist Fernanda Abra is on a mission to reconnect fragments of forest cut apart by human-built infrastructure by building canopy bridges over a highway in the Amazon rainforest. Take a look at how the project is protecting tree-dwelling mammals from dangerous encounters with vehicles on the road. Brazil is the most biodiversity country in the world in terms of primates. Nobody has more species of primates than us in Brazil. And we have the fourth longest uh, road network in the world. Of course, roads cause problems and impacts for primates. So right here is very easy to see the capuchin monkey. 
So Reconnect is a conservation project that aims to reconnect the Amazon rainforest and benefit tree-dwelling species to cross linear infrastructure safely, such as roads, uh, railways, and highways. So we are creating a solution to reduce fragmentation and reduce uh, road mortality, building and installing artificial canopy bridges. So we have 32 canopy bridges already installed in the states of Amazonas and Roraima, and now we are expanding the project in Alta Floresta. So this is a city in Mato Grosso state. And here we are installing uh, seven new canopy bridges. So the canopy bridges are part of the mitigation plan, but the program Alta Floresta Não Atropela also includes uh, the implementation of underpasses, wildlife underpasses associated with wildlife fences and wildlife crossing signs. Oh, my God. That's the most exciting part of the project. When, you, when we turn on the camera, and when we install them. For each bridge, we have two camera traps. So one of the cameras are facing the bridge. So then we're going to see how many individuals and what species are using the bridge and what's their behavior. So this is very interesting for science. But the second camera looks forward to the forest and I want to understand how many individuals come closer to the canopy bridge and cross, and how many don't cross. So understanding how many don't cross, maybe we can improve our design and then we can benefit more uh, species. So my vision for conservation is to make the road infrastructure of Brazil more sustainable for wildlife. And I believe that we can match the agenda of infrastructure with the agenda of biological conservation. We just need to work together. Today's story getting a 10 out of 10, an aquatic baby doll rescue. A crowd at the New England Aquarium collectively gasped when a little girl named Madeline dropped her baby doll right into an uncovered tank. Oh no, the baby doll, whose name is Baby, was swimming with the turtles, even catching a ride on one of the shells during its aquatic adventure. Madeline's dad said she was inconsolable without her doll, but luckily, Baby was pretty buoyant, and aquarium staff were able to fish her out of the tank, sanitize the doll, and reunite her with a now very happy Madeline. All right, everyone, it is almost time to end this week, but before we do, we gotta give a shout out, and this one goes to Catholic High School of New Iberia in New Iberia, Louisiana. Rise up, Panthers. Cue that Friday music, not air. Let's go out. Let's make this an awesome day. And remember, wherever you go this weekend, you never know who or how, but you just might be the light someone needs, so make someone smile. You are more powerful than you know. I'll see you Monday, everyone. I'm Coy Wire, and we are CNN 10. <laughs>